money. Joey, five double O. Got some goats in the field. Get ready for a shakedown. Prepare for a shakedown. We from Philly where they clap like huddles when they break down. Get ready for a shakedown. We underdogs, my guy. I kinda used to all the hate now. Prepare for a man, y'all get it. My QB got swag, my wideout is award winning. Back. It's fly, it was fly. Joey and 5 double O. Like and subscribe. Yeah. Here's a quote you can sing back. Shake squad up. And don't be a ding back. It's a shakedown. Don't you frown. It's Get a shakedown. Let's go. Yo, by the way, Kate Dink by here. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Philly Shakedown Podcast. And welcome to the aftermath of the Hassan Reddick trade, if that's what we're going to call it. Joey Shakes, man, what's going up, man? How are you? I can't hear you. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's my oh, bad. Got the, the button. I'm all, I just woke up not too long ago, so. Um, I feel like, you know, I, you know, we're going through free. I, I'm good. I'm good. I feel like we're going through free agency. I feel like, you know, we were, we were on a steady course, you know, we were getting our moves done. Um, and then, you know, this kind of got us sidetracked a little bit. It was going on for weeks and, um, unfortunately it happened for what reason? I, I guess there are reasons for it. Uh, we can probably be on both sides of it um, and figure out maybe there maybe there are positives more than negatives, but it's very hard when you're trying to go after a Super Bowl. And um, it's hard that we know that Reddick has to play very good next year just to – has to play – I have a monster steer next year just to get a draft pick. Not for this year, not for next year. Mm-hmm. For 2026 as a third round conditional, have to play over 67 percent of the snaps, um, right. and uh, has to have 10 plus sacks on top of it. So, uh, in that rotation in New York, so that's where we're at. Why, why, how he has done this? Um, I mean, you kind of talked about it afterwards a little bit on like, you know, who, you know, whose fault could it really have been? And and maybe it could have been Howie. Maybe it could have been, I, I was pretty much saying maybe it could have been a Reddick, maybe just not budging. And he was just sticking to one price and the Eagles weren't going to go down on that. And I don't know what you think, but. Yeah, I mean, maybe, <clears throat> you know, well, let, let me say hi to everybody in the chat. First of all, Nathan, what's going on? Splenda, Jadis Young, uh, <laughs> Vigilant. Uh, Woogie, uh, Daniel Berry, K. Robinson, um, Purify, Rock the Artist, time for action. Dave mm. does what's going on? Zilla, <clears throat> the dude, um, Martin, bunch of people in here. Um, Stream Element says you have a shakedown army. Uh, somebody, you you know anything about that? Oh, uh, that yeah, it's right. I just don't, 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 um, don't pay attention that, to it. Don't, don't pay, pay attention, attention to that. Okay. No, okay, no. okay. Um, what is going on, everybody? Thank you guys for being here. If I missed you, uh, sorry about that. Um, my my <laughs> thoughts are like, you know, I'm just a little bit shocked and taken back, not by the fact that the Eagles traded him. I mean, we heard the rumors about that. I'm just shocked about the fact that you're getting a 2026 draft pick. Like, why a 2026 draft pick and not something that helps you this year right away? Um, I really don't understand it. I don't understand some of the logic that's out there for the reasons why we weren't in cap. We weren't having cap problems this year and had to do it because of a cap move. Like some people say, well, we got to pay Devontae Smith, but you could have afforded Devontae Smith. I know. I... You know? And then it's like, <clears throat> then then the other justification I just don't get is, well, essentially we traded for Bryce Huff and a third. No, you, you didn't trade for Bryce Huff. You had him already on the roster with Hassan Reddick. See, I don't want it to be like, in two years, everybody's going to think of it as the Huff Reddick trade. It was not that. It was Reddick for picks in 2026, which tells me one of two things. One, the Eagles were determined to move him, even at a loss, because Howie Roseman does not lose trades. And right now, as we sit here right now today, it looks like a loss of a trade. Now, everything could change depending upon 
how Huff and Smith play. If they play well, then it was worth it. But as of right now, today, I mean, it's hard to understand this trade. And then, you know, the other thing I'll say is I believe there's another shoe to drop. I don't believe Howie Roseman, and this is his plan. I believe he's, Redick had to be moved for something else to take place. What that is, I don't know. I don't. Know. You're, you're taking a big. You're taking a big gamble right now with Nolan Smith that hasn't produced with the Philadelphia Eagles yet, and mm -hmm. Bryce Huff coming in like this is a guy that's been a rotational defensive end with one double digit sack season at forty three percent of the snaps. Like he hasn't played a full season yet. We don't even know what he looks like playing a full season. Yet. We're I mean, you're paying this guy based off of what he could do on a full season, you know, a, a potential. You know, that, I think that contract will look good. Well, why aren't the, you know, people are asking me too, Philly, why aren't the Jets pay Bryce Huff then? Because they don't look at Bryce Huff. That's a great they question. They, they don't look at Bryce Huff that way. They don't look at him as right. a, like Redick late in his career right now, like with the, with the statistics that he has, they don't look at Bryce Huff like, I, like that off of one. You're not going to pay him that much. The Eagles went all in. You well, know? and the same and the same weaknesses that they complain about uh, Reddick is the same things and issues that Huff has. Does not play the run well. Mm -hmm. Does not cover well. He's a purely a, a pass rush specialist. Um, I feel like as of <clears throat> right now today, like it was the one move too many. Uh, but I also got to to take this and say that there's a lot we don't know. Was Reddick no. going to hold out? If, if Reddick was going to hold out, it really hamstrings what you can do. But I will say this also. Keep an eye out on whether Reddick gets a contract from the Jets. If he doesn't get an extension and plays the last year of his contract out, then he would have played that with Philly. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so, I mean, listen, I, I, I have never seen a trade by Howie Roseman where I was like, uh, this is the first one. And, and and I just don't believe that Howie Roseman was going to let that. There's got to no. be something well, look, else. Look, uh, yeah, but look at the draft compensation, too. Like, look, I mean, look at compensation. That, look at the trades all over the place. It's not even just like this trade, but this looks like the worst out of all of them. Like, Legereus Need, third, you know, uh, you know, uh, a 25 third round pick. You know, Brian Burns, se second round pick. Less second and fifth. Second and well, yeah, I, for I forgot yeah. what the other pick was. Yeah, um, yeah. Second and then some, okay? Fifth round pick. And he's younger, but doesn't have statistics as Reddick. But, you know, like Justin Simmons, like, you know, like he's another guy that, you know, Denver was going to trade him, you know, and who's going to be have interest in a 30-year-old and, and give up draft high draft compensation and have to pay him, that's, you know, yeah. that's part that's of it a, too with all these the trades thing. going on. Yeah, that that's the thing is, is a lot of these guys like Sneed and stuff, when you have – to pay him big money, you don't want to pay a lot in draft compensation as well. So that's a part of it. But the, the difference between Reddick and, and all those cases was he was under contract. His numbers were already figured into our salary cap, and we still had $33 million. So it's just I – don't, I don't get the trade other than to say that um, either they know something about Nolan Smith – or, or, or Huff, and they know and they're sure that these guys are going to be as good, if not better, right away, or there's another shoe to drop. I just, you know, that's, I don't know. That's that's why part of it is how do you, like, that's why last year was such a shit show, because how are you supposed to analyze your roster with the coaching that we had last year? How are you supposed to sit okay. there as a coach and say, this is what I have, this is who I'm going to release, this is who I'm going to trade, this is who I'm going to, you know what I mean? You don't even have, like, a, like really good, like, a statistic type of, like, you know what you have, you know what you don't have. Maybe they do, right. but the way right. that these players were used last year, like, how – you know, it's it just really pissed me off. Nolan Smith, it, it's really not even Nolan Smith's fault. I know he had that stinger like in the beginning, like on the preseason game, missed some time, but like they just didn't give him any rep. Like barely his rotation was, was just horrible. He almost right. was disappeared from this defense. So it's a big yeah. gamble taking on Bryce Huff, and it's a big gamble on you know they're they're trying to just get younger and they're taking on some of the younger guys and saying hey like we have to, we're going to go off our younger guys like Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter like it's time to now with the past few drafts they're going to go off right. uh, around these guys now sorry right yeah no <laughs> i hear you uh the beard xsl gamer gaming man thank you for the super chat uh appreciate it he says they're going to trade that pick 
Um, are you referring to the red, the Reddick, uh, the Reddick trade, Reddick pick? Uh, I don't think the Eagles can even trade that pick because no. I think for a pick to be traded, you have to know what it is. So, like that, that, uh, that's a third round pick that could become a second round pick. And until we know exactly what that pick is, I don't even think they could they could pick it. So, or they could trade it. So they wouldn't be able to trade it this year. Shizzo Flex, thank you for the super chat. My man, he goes, AJ's contract has no guarantees after this season. He'll be back at the table next summer. Do you think Hertz has input on who stays 6 or 11? Uh, I, I think to a certain point, but I think that the Eagles are not going to let a draft pick, a guy that is homegrown, go. So I think the Eagles keep Devontae Smith before they keep uh, A.J. Brown, simply because uh, the Eagles really take <clears throat> the whole um, – you know, your homegrown guys, you draft your players, you sign them mm -hmm. uh, really seriously. So I think yeah. that I think that Devontae ends up staying. That's why going wide receiver early in the round is not a bad move. Right. Uh, for the for the long run, if you can get somebody that can play in the slot and then eventually play outside, you know, um, I'm, I'm really curious what, what some of the people are saying. And I, you know, I, I was angry dude, when I, that trade first took place. Dude, I saw I, all I saw was red. I couldn't see it. I was so angry and I could feel my blood pressure going up because I'm just trying to think like, all right, <clears throat> if, if you had a third round pick in 2024, like this draft, I could, I get it. But 2026, what? if you just let him play out and leave, you'll get a compensatory pick in 2026. So it, it doesn't make sense to me, you know? Yeah, I get it. You're not going to get many compensatory picks next year, right? But the year after that would be the one that counts if Reddick was to walk. That probably would have been a third round pick. Yeah. So I I don't know. And then and then if you look from the, I'll say this. I I am not shitting on Nolan Smith or Bryce Huff. I am not saying they're busts. I'm not saying they're not good players. I get it. All I'm saying is we have we have to see more from them before we really know. Reddick is a guy that literally has gotten double digit sacks four straight years in a row. You know what you get from him. Yeah. Uh, Huff has done it <clears throat> once. You know, I have the same issue with Sweat. Sweat has only done it once. Sweat has got to show us more consistency. Yeah, and I don't know if that's enough. I don't sweat and Brandon Graham on another side is going to be enough. Like with with Hassan Reddick, you're just getting it's not even just like his play, but you're getting a, a really good locker room guy. You're getting a guy that just sets an example. But uh, when it comes to his play too, like it, it, he's it's a consistent player. Like you know what really pisses me off? All the people that say, "Oh, he didn't do nothing at the end of last year." That oh, that's what that that's that pisses me off because then everyone's just likes to single him out, like he's the whole entire defense. Like no one else produced, you know. Everyone else produced besides him, you know. So you know, you have a guy who was making fifteen million a year, and obviously knowing that he was underpaid. Now, if he played on his current contract going into the season, yeah, he'd be like the twenty fourth highest paid edge rusher, which is. It's. I mean, we're not saying that he doesn't deserve his money, but if this no, trade, does. Does. if if this trade took this long, and how? I mean, Howie, if something was getting done, it would have got done earlier. It took this long because I feel like Howie had no cho choice, and his hands were tied, and he wasn't going to get the compensation that he wants. A lot of the rumors were coming out that the Eagles are wanting a second round pick, and they yeah. And I, why I, why I, did it become a conditional third? Because they couldn't get the second. And I think that was the whole process of it. Yeah, I I think I think that they there, there must have been some reason that they felt they had to trade him, you know. And we've heard rumors about him and Sweat not doing what was asked at the end of the year. You know, I I I understand people don't like the way he played the last six games, but the whole defense was horrible the the last six games. Um, but you know, was was he some was he a problem in the locker room? Was there something like that? Like, what are we missing? Because I feel like there's a giant piece to this puzzle we're missing i mean all the rumors that the eagles weren't just going to give reddick up uh for nothing and they weren't going to do like to go into next season and not get anything for him is what just i just, mean it surprises me i mean realistically do you think he wanted i mean he was going to get paid more than bryce huff i think we all know this but how much money do you think he actually wanted? because if he wanted into i mean was he gonna get paid a million more than bryce huff i mean it would have been if he wanted more than $23 million a year, 
I don't know if they were willing to pull that right no, now. No, I don't I don't think they and I don't think I don't think they should have extended them. No. I, I'm perfectly okay with that. But you could have gone and restructured the last year of his contract. Oh, here's yes. an extra five million dollars and you know, whatever, make him happy for that one year. See, everybody says, well, he would have hold out. I don't think at 30 years old, guy no, can afford to hold out. You, you have the time you to do that. You can't afford to hold out because you're going to hurt yourself from getting that long-term contract. He really would have been stuck having to play. Um, so I don't know. I, I feel like there's a lot to this we don't know. And and I don't know if it has to do with, like in the locker room stuff, if it's money or if Howie Roseman is sitting there going, we got to move Reddick because we're getting ready to do this. Yeah. And that that's what and, I'm hoping. And is. part of it, part of it, and, and part of it too, even with the Jets, if they were in, we don't know if like how long they, and then there's another thing. We don't know how long they've been in talks with the Jets. Is it, It's been just the Jets or it was multiple teams, but the Jets just had more, you know, the Jets had, we're going to have Jadavian Clowney at one point, And then he went right. to the Panthers. So, I mean, I guess they just switched avenues and, you know, Joe Douglas and Howie Roseman have worked together. So right. I don't think they were bickering back and forth. I think it was perfectly fine. It was down to, Reddick, what he wanted, and it was down to what the Eagles, you know, wanted in return. And the Jets were going to give it. And besides some of the trades that we've seen this year, like for a 30 year old guy, you're not going to get high draft compensation if a team has to pay a player that much money. If the con, we're going to see what this contract is, but we'll find out. Right. Remember, they're going to have this draft, <clears throat> and you don't have anything for the Reddick trade. Then you have a whole nother draft where it doesn't do anything. For the Reddick trade, then you get the the the, the pick for Reddick. So it's it's really far Crazy. out there. Like, you know, uh, I had Nick to, I, says, I, No, go, go ahead. Where you go ahead you're good. You're good. You're good. Okay, I'm telling you, I think Howie is doubting Hurts, and the next time he has a bad season, Tiny Hands will be our quarterback. <laughs> well, maybe maybe Howie. When's when's Manning's kid come out of the draft in 2026? <laughs> Are we setting up for something in case? I don't know. I'm just kidding. But <laughs> Chizzo Flex, thank you for a super chat. He goes, they do. But if Hertz says, I want AJ here, and AJ sees that Jefferson Lamb deal, he's going to want to be in the ballpark. This is very interesting. I really think that you'll see, in my opinion, I think AJ Brown plays for the Eagles another two years. And then I think mm -hmm. that he moves on. I think that's what's going to happen, in my opinion. I would love to have both of those guys. But, um, you know, what are we talking, like 30 millions per receiver? It's hard to believe that they would pay that much. 25 plus. You know? That's what the going yeah. rate is. Yeah, and thank you for that super chat. It is going to be interesting. I will say that. Uh, Oklahoma says the Jets will be giving a second because Reddick is about to have 20 sacks. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's definitely funny, but it's like he – in that in that rotation, who knows? Like he's got to catch fire early. You know he's really streaky, but I don't yeah. want to see. It's like I don't. I want him to do well, but I don't want to see him do well because like it's just gonna make us look so much worse. It's like not only do right. you get. I mean, I had to. I had to do a double take at that report and said two thousand. That's what I did. Yeah. <laughs> I know because I what? I was actually in the car. I was driving home for lunch, and um, I'm I re I read it and it was like. Oh, third. So we got third. That might be a second. But wait a second. How would they know? And I like looked again. I'm like, oh wait, that's a 2026. Wait, what? That's when I kind of got pissed off. Uh, K. Robinson says Reddick's done it, but other teams moved on from him too. And that's an interesting. Uh, that's an interesting point she brings up because um, Reddick has been on two other teams before this. And they were both willing to move on from him after double digits years. Why is that too? Is Reddick the most underappreciated player in the NFL? It's looking like or it. is is there something that about his game that teams think that yeah, he might get a sacks, but we're gonna move on from him? I mean, Arizona did, Carolina did, and then now we did. I, I don't know. It's yeah, and I and I think part of it is like I don't know what's going on like behind the scenes too. With I mean, we're talking about anything that's going on behind the scenes. But I think the one thing too is, you know, is it if their Eagles were willing to give him or meet or, or they weren't even looking like they were going to meet in the middle anyway. But if they were going to, like, do you think that paying him what they were going to get paid for an off ball scheme like this is it going to be worth the money? Like, we're you know 
you're gonna, you know, you just saved it like 14.5 million. You're over 40 million cap space right now. You got right. you you got some good cap right now, you know, but right. it's very late in free agency. And there's yeah. what else could you do out there? I think the only free agent that's really available is Yank Ngakwe, which which he's 30 right now, and it's uh He's only had four sacks. It's probably his second worst year of his career with the, you know, with the Bears. Uh, man, somebody put something in my mind. They planted a seed yesterday in a comment, and now it, the the comment that the planted seed comment just is growing in my mind, and it's taking complete control. What's that? What if the Eagles are setting up to trade for Josh Allen of the Jaguars? Right. People, mind blown, mind wow. blown, brother. Wow. <laughs> Now, if you do something like that, I'm I'm like I get it. You know, you think like a draft. You think like a draft day trade. I don't know. I mean, I I just feel like I've never seen how he get so little back in value for a, a pick. And I, I, um, I, he doesn't do anything without it being how he's usually three four steps ahead of everybody. So to me. You know, some people say, well, it's fair value, but it's 2026 and you're trying to win a Super Bowl here in 2024, <clears throat> you know. Uh, Trexler says it wasn't enough last year and we had Reddick. But the whole but the whole defense stunk. I mean, I mean, listen, I think trading when Desai got when Desai got uh, fired and Patricia came in instead of Patricia just taking over, knowing what these guys do well. And this is what I don't understand about coaches, even Vic Fangio. Like, I don't understand. Why is it so important that you think your scheme is better than the talent? Like, a good coach, Dick Vermeil has said this, a good coach looks at the players and the talent that he has and builds his scheme according to that. Why are some of these coaches so rigid that they can't come off of their scheme even a little bit so you can benefit your players. Patricia comes in and he tries to change things up. I think Reddick dropped back like 30% of the time with him taking over. Uh, I, I, It's hard for me to blame Reddick. I, I mean, the whole defense was bad. And um, I don't know that that's what, the reason why I wouldn't bring Reddick back. At the end of the day, he still had 11. He was the only your, your only double-digit sack guy. Oh, so what's the plan B? Like, what's like we were thinking, you know, the draft. I think, and I said that I've said this in multiple videos that this, it, whatever happens to the song wreck is going to drastically change what they do in the draft. I, that's, I feel like that's, I feel like it changes indefinitely changes now. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, that would, yeah. KT Davis super chat says <clears throat> Mark Holmes posts more Eagles content than you all. It's because he's got nothing else to do. Mark Holmes makes a video every five minutes. It's like, turn it on. Hey, friends, Mark Holmes. I don't know. And then he gets in his car. Hey, friends, Mark Holmes. I'm in the car. And it's like, oh, hey, friends, I'm at Home Depot. Hey, friends, I'm vacuuming. Hey, friends, I'm about to make matrimonial duties. Hey, friends, I finished matrimonial duties. That's why it was only 15 seconds from my last video. Like, he makes a, a thousand videos a day. Uh, it, it, at this point, it's like... It's either Eagle stuff or why it's not Dak's fault. That, <laughs> those are his two videos every day. Mm. Eagle stuff, and then it's not Dak's fault. But thank you for Super Chat. Uh, so Reddick has, has been a locker room problem. It's the only way this trade makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it would be the only way I could see that, that you know, we have to move. Because don't you feel, Joey, that it's like, they're not just saying, well, we, we, we got to trade him because he wants a contract. They're like, we got to get him out of here. We got to get him out of here, even if we take a loss. I think we're going way too far into it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I mean, dude, how many times have you seen somebody ask for draft picks that are literally two years down the road? No, I, I know. And why does Howie accept it? You know, like, so it makes you think either they were desperate to get rid of him or. Right. Or or Reddick w was just not budging out of his price range, and I, I don't know. I mean, how do the Eagles? How do they? They had all the control. Like that's the issue I have. They had the leverage. They had all the control. And yes, the only time they won't have the leverage is if Hassan Reddick gets to training camp and he says, "Well, I'm holding out." And maybe he already told the Eagles, "Well, if I don't, if you guys keep me on the roster, maybe the agent said if he, you know, if Reddick stays on the roster, he's just going to hold out. So take maybe. whatever you can get." I, I don't know, but I mean, hopefully we find out. But yeah. 
So <laughs> you know, I feel I feel like there's a big piece to this whole thing that that is that we don't get and we don't know because I, I like I said I I've never seen Howie Roseman uh, make a trade where I'm like I don't know he didn't get enough for that you know. And I think a lot of people, like a lot more people, would be into this. Matter of fact, I have a, a, I have a poll. Let me see what this poll says. I did a poll. What grade you gave the Eagles for the uh, Reddick trade? Um, a was six percent. B nineteen. C twenty eight. Forty five percent people said D and F, and that's four hundred twelve people that voted. So that that tells you, you know, a lot of people didn't feel like we got enough, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's a 2026 pick, not a pick but this year. How he wants, how he Roseman wants to compete for a Super Bowl. This, this, this move is just, just one of those eye openers. Like why did it go this direction? Like what, yeah. why did it take this long to trade him? If this was going to happen, like why did it take right. until almost April pretty much to, for right. this to even happen? So yeah, it, it questions yeah. me. Yeah. Jimmy says, uh, yo fellas, Reddick will get 10 sacks. It will be a second. <clears throat> Think how he wants to jump up from 50 in the second to the beginning of the second. Yeah, but the problem is, is that uh, the second isn't this year. It, 26. It's, it's, two, it's 2026. So we don't even know where you're drafting in 2026. You could be the last team in the second round. You could be the first team. This is not a 2023 draft pick. This is a 2026 draft pick. So we have to wait. Well, literally. is it? It's drafts. like it's like when it's like when the Lions traded it's like when the Lions traded Swift to us right for a 25 fourth round pick right but they had a backup plan because they drafted a guy in the first round they drafted Jameer Gibbs in the first round they already had the backup plan they didn't just get rid of Swift and say oh you know and that's and then really had no plan behind it so right. I think your draft changes I think sitting at 22 right now I think an edge rusher has to be possible at this point. Right. I mean, it, it it might. You have picks this year. It's not like you don't have any picks. They have money now, so right. you know maybe maybe they'll pick off from a trade somewhere around the league. Maybe. I I don't know, but but you just made that side of your line. I mean, but, but God forbid, what if you have an injury with Josh? But what if one guy one guy gets hurt? It, it's what do you, right. you, you got Patrick Johnson, Brandon Graham? I mean, seriously, like what do you have over there? Right, not much. Yeah, yeah. K. Rao says we didn't need a disgruntled player. You all act like. Forcing a guy to play is the idea. Well, l listen, um, that doesn't mean we should just give a guy away for nothing either. Like, goes you know, both what's, ways. what's the in between? Uh, I think me and Joey have talked about the in between a lot. You know, restructure his deal, give him more money for one more year, and let him play it out and then go on his way. Uh, that would have been a good middle ground. But at the same, you know, yeah, you don't want a disgruntled player. I get that. But you also don't want to just give them away for nothing, and that's what we did. Uh, to me, that's what we did. We yeah. we don't have any help. We don't get anything from that pick for another yeah. two drafts. And, and what's his mindset? Is Reddick's mindset winning a championship, or is he getting paid, or is it both? Does he actually think he can win with the Jets? I don't know. I mean, I, it sounded like he just wanted to get his money, and, and that was it. So, But he hasn't signed it. It's not like he signed a contract. Not yet. Jets. No contract. So it wasn't was like, yet. oh, they signed, they trade for Hassan Reddick and he signs an extension. We have we haven't so, seen that. Yet. So let me ask, let me ask one thing. So if, if he was like a disgruntled player and like was a headache and you see reports of that, do you do you, would you feel more better about this trade? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want a player that I don't want a player that doesn't want to play for me. I, I really don't, you know, but um at the same time, I, I I just don't want to give him away for nothing, especially when he's your best defensive player. <laughs> you know, um, I I think there's a middle ground. I think I think the middle ground was a restructure one year. Maybe he wouldn't do it. Maybe he refused to do it. These are the things that we don't know yet, and these are the things that would really help me to kind of like uh, accept this trade. You know, and be able mm -hmm. to like people say, well, you, why why don't you like it? Because I don't like giving away my best player for nothing. And that's how I look at it. So if there was more information, like Reddick said he would not, he was unwilling to work with the Eagles. He was unwilling to restructure the last year of his deal. He was unwilling to show up for camp. He was not going to play. All right, then I kind of get it. But if it's just that, you know, 
we don't want to pay him, and Vic Fangio has decided he doesn't want him, so let's just get rid of him for for something, for anything. I don't like that idea, you know. I don't think it makes you better. I don't think if you look at your defense going into 24, I don't think you can say that we're better now, not having Reddick. Because nothing is going to replace his productivity, whether you go in this draft or whether you trade for somebody. Because no, because because this is a these are these are players you you don't really find. But it seems like teams do pass up on guys like this. You said Carolina passed up on him, um, and with yeah, Carolina, Carolina he was Carolina. Uh, sorry, with 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 the Cardinals, he was he was more of an outside linebacker for the Cardinals. And I think his last year they started to use him more as an edge guy. And you know, while it was too late and then um, played really well and, and just decided not to pay him. So I, I, I don't know. Him. They traded him no, yeah, Carolina. they traded him. They traded him. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I just, I don't know. Uh, she has a, thank you for super chat. He goes, longer six goes without a new deal, the more I look. I, I think that right now with Devontae, you're okay because you've got that whole option year coming. So I think the Eagles are going to use that uh, to their advantage. But I do mm-hmm. think the fact that Reddick is off the books, I do think you're probably – I think there's a much better chance now that you'll see Devontae get done probably, you know, before the end of next year. Uh, but I also think, you know, I, I, I'm going to stand there and – I'm going to sit there and say, I still <laughs> believe that there's another shoe to drop. I don't believe Howie Roseman was going to weaken his team this much on defense. Not when he's done so much. I think he's got a plan, and I think we got to watch it and play out. No, it makes it makes sense. I feel like like there's no way if Howie's trying to compete with this roster, they know how valuable that Reddick is. Like there's got to be there's got to be some another plan in motion with this whole thing. Yeah, I I agree. Run defense is a team effort on defense. Who's making big money just because they can stop the run? Not a lot of play. Not a lot of people. You know. It's I don't know I I don't know it's it's just um uh, it's just some something's got something is up to me man something it feels like this is not completed yet um Khan Taver Super Chat goes Reddick was not underpaid no team is willing to pay him more than what he is making he can't cover and he can't defend the run Jets are renting well I mean why didn't we just rent <laughs> I mean he would have got you double digit luxury. Sack. It's a luxury, almost an automatic luxury that you know it's going to work out. Well, and the thing is, too, is is you're not. You, it wasn't like well, the Eagle. It's not like the Cowboys situation, right? Where one player is is holding up their whole cap. Uh, we had thirty three <laughs> million dollars of cap space with Reddick's contract on the books. So, like, I don't know. You got to give me something for Reddick. Cheyenne, yeah. Daver Super Chat goes, do you think that this has anything to do with what Craig Carton said about the major Eagles player not being back due to off-the-field issues? That's a good question. Uh, could he have meant Reddick? Maybe. Or, or maybe he meant a player. I mean, to me, if, if Reddick was a problem in the locker room, then this would make a lot more sense to me. This would make a ton of more sense to me. Um, you know, but I, I don't know. I, I thought he was referring to A.J. Brown. And, but I, I don't know for sure. What do you think about you? You, you know what he's talking about? Yeah, I heard the. Yeah, I saw the reports on that. I, I don't know. I mean, that's when a name's not thrown out there, and you could, and you, th- you could think back to that. But I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't see him that way. But I mean, we, we don't, we don't really know. So, right, it's hard to answer that. Lucius, the show says, trust me, the trade will absolutely look better by the end of the year. Listen, that's the whole thing. I mean, the, the key to this whole thing really is is Nolan Smith and, and and Huff. If they go out there and they play well and they show, you know, what we think they can be, mm-hmm. then, then you're it's gonna be like, yeah, all right, we 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 didn't need Reddick. Good call. Now we've got more money. I, I get that. You can't you can't give an absolute about the trade yet. Or for really, for that matter, any trade. You got to see how it plays out. But as we're here today looking in, I'm, I wonder what we have in, in Nolan Smith. I wonder if Huff can do it two years in a row. I have questions about them and the compensation. So we'll see. At the end of the day, we'll, we'll have a better idea at the end of the year. I mean, if Reddick goes out there and has eight or nine sacks, then to me it was worth it, Joey, you know? 
Yeah, and like I said, like we're we're going off of like what everything looks like right now. I mean, we're not saying we're not shitting on Nolan Smith. We're not shitting on Bryce Huff at all. Like, thank God no. they got thank God they got Bryce Huff. I mean, thank God they went out there and aggressively went after him. But it's just one of those things where, like, you know, you're looking at a guy at 30 years old that is, has a body of work and has been one of the most consistent players on the edge in his career in the NFL. And you're looking at a guy that's coming off of one double digit sack season that hasn't even played a full season in his career. So, you know, yeah. a big gamble for the Eagles. And I think they're, they're, they're looking towards their young guys. And, um, you know, I, I, I look, we might, like you said, we might be shocked. You might be like, Oh my, Oh my God. Yeah. Like Bryce Huff might be a monster this year. And be like, damn, Howie Roseman. I, like, I, I, I think knows? Bryce Huff's going to be good. Mm -hmm. I, I do. I yes. think he's going to be good. And I think Nolan Smith is going to be good. Um, I just don't know where they're going to be at next year. But if you had Reddick for one year and they played behind him, I love that idea of then they take over for him. Um, so we would have gotten to see a year of what they were about. Um, but, it, you know, it did turn out that way. They, listen, we won't know until the end of the year. But I, as of right now, it just I, – I look at it and I think to myself, when you had Reddick, Sweat, Huff, Graham, Nolan Smith. You had an unbelievable set of pass rushers that would have just been rotating in. And I think you had an elite type defensive line. You mm -hmm. take Reddick off that, I think you have a good defensive line. You know, I'm not saying the Eagles are going to be trash. These players are going to be trash. It's season's over. We're not going to do it. None of that, I believe. But I believe you had something special. With with the amount of talent you had acquired at at the edge rusher, I agree. Um, Slip says we literally sold Reddick for a bag of chips. If luck pushes our direction, hopefully that bag of chips turns into flame and yawn. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. Veal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trexler says nobody knows if Reddick has been a locker room problem. When did that come out? I, I it didn't come out really. It, it really didn't come out. There was a statement that John McMullen made. And it, it really sounded like he was really referring to uh, Josh Sweat more, where he said that some of the players didn't do the things that Patricia wanted them to do at the end of the year. They weren't buying into the system. That's how I took it. Uh, but I don't know that Reddick was a problem at all. I have never said or do I uh, uh, agree that Reddick was a problem. I, I don't know that. But you only bring that up and people only bring it up because then it makes that's because they're then you know then it makes sense that's how people try to rationalize and justify a trade that they can't um because it doesn't make sense yeah so we're all looking for that you know well what's that reason why where's the oh yeah i get it now you know where's the connection Red Mafia Gaming, thank you for Super Chat. He goes, don't know why people are hating on Hurts. He is the main reason we won a lot of games last year. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I mean, I guess because he's a quarterback, I don't, you know, I, dude, I get, I get comments like, you know, people be like, uh, they'll be like, uh, yeah, Reddick did have a bad last six games, and basically it's all Hurts' fault, you know? It's like, wait, J Jalen Hurts is the least of our problems. No. The least of our problems. No, not even worried about that. You know? No. <clears throat> Corey Williams says, only one pick is what rubs me wrong. Not even two picks. And if Hurts isn't the guy down the road, they can use that as trade bait for a new quarterback. That's, yeah, I mean, I guess they could. I mean, when's the when's Manning kid come out? <laughs> In 2026? Are we stocking drafts <laughs> already for him? You know? I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Lewis, thank you for Super Chat. He goes, Howie only plays... Pays homegrown talent. This will be AJ's last year. I think AJ's got two years left. Yeah, two because, years. Because it'll be – because even if Devontae signs an extension, it won't kick in till after next year. So I think essentially you got two years left with, with AJ Brown. Radiation Boss, thank you for Super Chat. But man, he goes, what if Reddick was the problem in the locker room? Well, I mean, that, that changes everything. If Reddick – you know, if it came out – that he was a problem in the locker room. If it came out that he was going to hold out, I think those things change the narrative. They change my opinion of the trade. They do. 
they, it would change my opinion oh, yeah. of how I I feel about the trade, huh? I agree. No, I agree. I mean, if you have a player yeah. that doesn't want to be here, I mean, it's it's you don't want that effect. That can affect your whole team, your whole roster. I'm right. Sure. Bubba says, that goes to show you that there was no market for Redick. Uh, that's because the best offer how he could get was stupid. Move should have just kept him for the year because Jets didn't sign him to an extension. Agree. That's what that's my point. Like, like at what point is the value? It's just more valuable to keep them than to move them, especially for what we built this year, you know, in this team. Um, you know, it, it's interesting. Nathan says the people saying uh, he didn't fit the scheme forgot 2021. Fangio needs edge pressures. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, I, I, th I think that's one of those rationalizations again. Like people are looking for reasons why the trade was okay. But I just I just think if we're honest with ourselves, it's it's we don't understand the trade right now. Don't understand why it had to happen, why yeah. it had to go down the way it did. And if <clears throat> is there something we're missing? Is there some that's what I mean? I'm doing, I'm trying to go, you know, okay, what am I missing here? What is there something else? And and my thing is I hope there's just another shoe to drop. And there was a this was step one of a plan for something, you know? Yeah, yeah. And Lewis, thank you for the super chat. But how he does, he likes his homegrown talent. He does. Uh, Army, a member for 42 months. He goes, I'm all right with the Reddick trade. He's getting older. We usually hold on to guys too long. Pause. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is, is that you're going into next year and you you replace, you get rid of Reddick, but you replace him with nothing. You know, um, you've replaced him with nothing. And I mean, uh, you got no compensation for him. Yes, you brought in Bryce Huff as a, a free agent who will take over a large part of his role, Nolan Smith too, <clears throat> but you're, you're, you're getting rid of talent and not getting a draft pick in return. You're not getting a player in return. So, like, I see that as a problem because the idea is you want to win a Super Bowl next year, and I don't see how this makes you better. Because this is a different player we're talking about. This, you know, a, a, a guy like Reddick, like that, <laughs> has the numbers that he has every single year. It's hard. It's hard. It's not just a, a normal trade, like uh, for a player that's not consistent. This guy is the most one of the most consistent players. But if you're competing to let a guy go like this, or you know, Howie Rosen is not doing everything in his power to keep him in Philadelphia, at least for the year, at least restructure his contract, throw him some more guaranteed money up front in his face. Say, hey, you know, let's just try to get something this year. Let's get this done. Um, right. It just makes me question what's the real reason behind it. And, you know, maybe Vic Fangio wants more of a scheme fit. I mean, he might look for a guy that's more scheme fit. I, you know what I mean? Didn't Reddick, I, I mean, I mean, how much is changing <clears throat> from what he's doing to what, what, uh, Jonathan Gannon did. Jonathan Gannon ran a Vic Fangio scheme, more of a hybrid, but, right? Because they go into four three is a lot. Yeah, but it's more. But it's more though. It's going to be more. It's going to be more pass coverage. That's that's Fangio's scheme is even but when see, Fangio's and, and, in charge of it. It's worse. It's see, worse. And, and this is my problem with coaches. Like, yes. If you're a good coach, why are you trying to force a square peg in a round hole? Why, as a coach, are you not saying, "Hey"? This is what this guy does well. This is what this guy, this is what my linebackers do well. This is what my talent is. I am going to build around that. When Jim Johnson came to the Eagles, he went to he went to Brian Dawkins and he said, I am going to build my defense around you. He told him that. Brian Dawkins talks about that. Brian Dawkins was really the first one of the first safeties that became where you had to not just be able to tackle and play in the box, but you had to be able to coverage, cover, okay? And I think it really changed this the way that teams looked at the safety position. But that was a coach that looked at his talent and built around it. Why can't Vic Fangio say Hassan Reddick is a double-digit sack guy, is one of the best closers in the NFL? I am going to use him to his talent. Why does he think his system – is so good that everybody should have to bend to it. That, to me, I don't like coaches like that, Joey. I don't. That stuff gets on my nerves. 
Yeah, and it makes it it makes it harder because like you know a lot of offenses have kind of figured out this off ball scheme now because a lot of these teams are going to throw underneath, um, you know, and you're going to have guys open. But for a, for a defense like this, you got to have athletically sound guys at linebacker, and you need to have your pass rush has got to hit home. And I think that right. somewhat happened last year with Fangio. Like I don't think it was as bad. I don't think he was great against the pass last year, but he did get pressures. He did use his linebacker. They were athletically sound, so I mean, we have to give it a shot. I mean, Fangio, I don't think has won a Super Bowl under under his, under his defense ever. Um, so, you know, I, it's it's. I get. I'm not it. saying I'm not saying he shouldn't have his scheme that he like, but I'm just saying you've got to be able to. You've got to. You can't say well, a player is one dimensional and he does this and he only does that. But you're a one dimensional coach in that you can only do what you but, think your system should do instead of using your players the correct way. Uh, using a player correct way is to put them in the best position to be successful. Use them to their talent. But, but why yeah. is Nick so obsessed with this scheme? Like I I don't get it. Like even like Howie and 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 Howie and Je- you know and Jeffrey Lurie like they saw what we looked like with Jim Schwartz. I mean even with Jim Schwartz we were we were really aggressive like and we had it was very creative on blitzes on blitz packages. And, you know, it, it's, it, it just, I don't, I don't know where this, I, I think this is a lot of Nick Sirianni. Like he even kept it in house, this defense in house last year when Gannon's not even here, Gannon comes to Philadelphia and just, just is the most aggressive defense I ever seen from, from Gannon. And we saw what he did right. all year last year, but I think Nick had too much control over this defense in 22. And I think he had control over it last year as well. And, and you know, right. you hired the guy closest to Vic Fangio, the apprentice of Vic Fangio that was closest to him that worked up pretty much with him in Chicago and, you know, 2021 and before that. Um, I don't know. It's, I question this defense. Like, like I don't know why you have yeah, to I'm, force players to play a s- certain scheme, and it's just yeah. You know. Well, I'm not saying that you can't build a, a, a coach can't build a, a defense and a scheme that he wants, and 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 get the players that he needs. But sometimes that takes time. You come in right away first year. You're not going to have every player fit every p- position you need. So in the meantime, before you get to build what you need exactly, you have to adjust. Tell me how Bryce Huff is any different than Hassan Reddick. They say he's the same same issues. Get not good against the run, can't cover, and he's basically a pass rush specialist. Isn't that what you had in Hassan Reddick? Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 I don't get it. There was There's something... Something There's happened. something else, something, something that we're missing here. There's something that we oh. don't know a, yet. A, a 26 third round conditional is already questionable as it is right now. Like, like right. you're gonna, yeah. I mean, if they, if the Eagles value him that much, like, then what, what happened? Like, if he has no value, like, why 26? Why not 25? I mean, I mean, I think we'd be complaining I mean, if it was not, 25 at this point. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't get it. Mr. Rudy put David Super Chat goes, was Reddick the player Craig Douche Pay Carton was talking? David Super Chat. I don't know. I mean, it, it, everybody assumed that was AJ Brown. Maybe, maybe. And I wish, I wish whatever it was, it, it would come out, you know? I mean, listen, I'm going to be rooting my ass off for these guys, you know, Nolan Smith. Huff, I think they could be very good. There, there's no doubt about it. But to me, that still doesn't explain why you just give a guy away for basically nothing. Uh, Foster yeah. Parks, a member for eight months, he goes, y'all think Reddick left because Fangio's 3-4 scheme. I I don't know. I, I don't I don't think I don't think it's that's why it, he left. I think he left because um, he wants to get a, an extension somewhere and he wants to get paid although the Jets haven't extended him yet. And and I think the Eagles have some – I think the Eagles have a plan. I, I don't believe this this whole thing's over. I believe there's another shoe to drop. And, and, and they're going to make a move and we're going to go, ah, now we get it. I really believe that. 
Yeah, I, I'm I'm hoping there's a backup plan because yeah. if you thought you got better, you, you didn't. And if you think going into the first round of this draft is going to make everything better, it, you know, and drafting an edge rusher, it's not. Well, that, but that, uh, no. Maybe we're thinking well, about the numbers too much over like maybe more scheme fit type guy that could produce as much and maybe it'll help other positions. I don't I don't know. Like I I don't know how to think uh, yeah. about it, you know. Philly fan says twenty five million on his contract. They can't afford that amount since they have thirty one of the cap space left with the upcoming draft coming up and the players they pick. How are they going to sign them? They thirty three million dollars under the cap. They just signed uh, Saquon Barkley in the first year of his contract. He's <laughs> making three point eight million against the cap. The way you set up the first year of a contract is you set it up where you give them a signing bonus so your cap number is small. If mm -hmm. you go and look at most of these guys that, that we signed, how do you sign all these guys and have $33 million of cap space available? The Eagles had $50 million next year. You do it because when they sign these guys, they sign them in a way and they structure it in a way with guaranteed money so that the cap number the first few years is real yeah. low. So you could have easily done it, and Reddick could have been $4 million against the cap that, and would have been making a ton of money. Yeah. But I don't want to extend him. To me, it wasn't about extending Reddick. You just – he's under contract already. Play out your contract. That's it. Yeah, and that number actually – that 25 number actually changed almost $60 million. It actually updated to almost 60, which is insane of how much cap they could have next year. But A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith – um, AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Saquon Barkley, Jalen Hurts, and Dallas Goddard only account to 33, 34 million against right. cap. Yeah. I mean, you're yeah. telling me that they couldn't fit him. I mean, come on now. Right. Like the guy yeah. is a cap genius. So. Right. And what he does is he waits, yeah. and then when the contract gets to the point where you're gonna have a huge cap number, he restructures. That's when he restructures the contracts. He, he's very smart at how he does it, you know. Richie MC, uh, Dave Super Chat goes, Philly 500, are you lacking a hammer and a nail? I'm not. No. The fuck is I have mean? plenty. Thank you. I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking, like, is this something you're referring to, like, Easter? <clears throat> or is this, like, I don't know. I don't know. But I know that I have a hammer, and I have a lot of nails. Uh, Lonnie Taylor, Dave Super Chat, he goes, and how we, we trust, no way he left uh, for no reason. Yeah, I agree. There, there's something to this whole thing we don't know. You know, uh, I agree with that. Thank you for uh, for the super chat, uh, Rich MC. Thank you for super chat, man. Because where is the YouTube plaque? Oh, 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 I got it. Yeah, I didn't put the plaque on the wall. Yeah, That's hurry up right. And put it on the fucking. Yeah, wall. I know. Jesus I just, Christ. I just, I just been lazy about it. I'll get it up. I'm gonna put it here. I think it's in the garage. <laughs> it's hanging up in the garage. No, no, no. It's not in the garage. It's 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 in my shelf. Uh, Richie, thank you for the super chat. Now I get it. Now, now let me ask you. Because of the Reddick move, does this change the draft, or especially the first round, to you? Do you think that the Eagles are definitely going edge rusher now? I mean, I think it makes it too obvious right now, unless they make somewhat of a trade. But like we were, we were talking about cornerback. We've been talking about we've been talking about cornerback mostly um, in the I first know. round. But the I problem know. is, here's here's the thing, and because we can get the corner as well, because it's just one of those things now where you know Bradbury, nothing's happened yet. There's been no post June designation. There's been, I mean, there hasn't been any movement. And I'm thinking they're going to keep Reddick because. He was, you know, with a pass rush in front of him, and with and and with, uh, you know, Fangio being a consultant in, in twenty two. Okay, uh, with with Bradbury here played really well. Um, they might not be giving up on him now. He only cost four million, a little over four million for the year, so he's not expensive to keep on the roster. So with Isaiah Rogers here and the rest of these guys here, maybe they're still empty at nickel. Maybe they're looking for that next nickel guy. Maybe maybe they go different because I was thinking maybe Cooper De uh, DeGene in this draft, but now you have you know they brought in Liatu Latu, you know uh, you know earlier. That, you know, Chop Robinson now has been brought on a pre-draft visit. I think Chop Robinson is the is the probably the least uh, defensive end I would actually get in this draft. Um, you can get scheme fits. Latou has been in coverage. Uh, Dallas Turner is more of a hybrid guy from edge rusher to um, you know outside linebacker as well. Has played both. 
Um, you know, so I feel like I almost feel like you have to go that you have to go that direction now. But you're at 22. You're not you might not get a Dallas Turner or a lot to you might have to move up, which out of the four to five years they have moved up in the draft in the first round. So it's it's almost certain that they I don't I I, don't I, I was thinking about this and my thought was, you know, maybe they do. Maybe they go a uh, defensive end. I think this team's trading up no matter where they go. I think trade up is, is going to happen. I'm, I'm like 85% chance they're trading up. And especially if they're, they're trying to get a defensive end. But I got it. I got, you know, I got a feeling they're going, they're going offensive line. I, 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 I'm getting more and more feeling that they're going to go offensive tackle because, uh, Stoutland is apparently high on a bunch of guys, mm-hmm. and and um, there's like I mean there's like five six tackles going to go in the first round. Like if you look at the tackles, the corners, and the a- edge rushers, like there's a bunch of group uh, of them that are good. But I think you got to trade up, no matter what you do. I I I get in the feeling they're going offensive line because if you really believe in Nolan Smith and Huff. Do you really want to go get another pass rusher right away, or do you think that you're okay? Or do you say, "Hey, we got to we got to replace huh. we got to replace Brandon Graham"? They've went down that direction in the past few years. Like it, it would be nice if they changed what they've done and went corner, or went a different position. But you lose Reddick, and now you're going to have an offensive tackle redshirting. I'll tell you <laughs> what: if they go tackle, if they go tackle, though, I want that kid from Alabama. There was a J.C. Latham, Latham. Yeah, yeah, six yeah. Six foot eight or six something like six 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 eight, like three forty. Guy could play guard and tackle. Like they say, he's athletic freak. Like that's the kind of guy I would love Stoutland to mold. But I mean, I don't know what they're going to do. It, you would think maybe with Reddick gone, they go edge rusher. They need linebackers still. I mean, I like the Devin White signing. But I mean, th- there's more to do, Joey. There's more to I do. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think if you're losing Reddick, like, you can't afford to draft and all. I mean, I think offensive linemen are going to drop in this draft. Like, they got Dad says Fon, uh, Fontau, whatever that guy. Um, it's another guy that I think. Uh, Fontu, uh, Fon- yeah. Yeah. Fonantu, whatever his name is, had a private workout with him. I think the yeah, most Stout athletic tackle. Him. So I think there's I, I I think a lot of these guys are going to drop. There there might be some guys that drop in this draft. So it wouldn't I, it wouldn't. Shock I think me. I think you're going to see a lot of tackles go off the board uh, before the twentieth pick. Hmm. I think a lot of edge rushers before the twentieth pick. Yeah, and I think you're going to see. I, I think around f- between fifteen and twenty, you might see two or three corners go. So I think it's one of those three positions. I, I wonder how much the Reddick situation changes it, but we'll see. Dad says, why did the Jets trade away a young guy they drafted if he's so good for a 30-year-old at the same position and pay him way more? Well, they didn't they didn't trade him. They, he went he was a free agent. So yeah. Uh he was a free agent. But th- that's a great question. Why did the Jets feel that? Hassan Reddick was the more valuable guy to get. It's it's uh, it's, it's obvious. Like that's the guy you add to to win a championship. Like the Jets are going all in. Like you're looking at the body of work, and Reddick's just a better yeah. player right now. I mean, that's you're not. They don't want to. They don't want to pay. They're not going to pay Bryce Huff over twenty million a year off of one year because that Bryce Huff contract for us, he's going to be a, a fantastic. He's going to be a, such a great player. I mean, I'm sorry, but I've watched a lot of tape on Bryce Huff, and he, that guy can rush, man. That guy is. Oh yeah, that guy's oh, yeah. a monster. Yeah, like he did he, damage he, he, to us he, too. Like, listen, the Jets have a history of being stupid. So hopefully that that, 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 you know, that that kicks into gear because the one thing with Huff is if Huff has just started to emerge and he had his first double digit, you know, year, that means his best years are still coming. That, that, that's right where you want to be. He's just got to go out and show us he can do it. Right. Dad says it doesn't add up. I don't, I don't think it adds up either, you know? And, and I think, I think we're, I think something else is going to happen. I do. I think there's another shoe to drop. Big fish, little boat. Thank you for the super chat. He goes, Patrick Johnson and Milton uh, could step up also. I think, I think Milton Williams, I think he's, I think he's gonna have a good year. I mean, I, I think, think he's a great rotational piece. 
I think he's underrated, to be honest. He gets better every single year with more opportunity he has. I think he was the only defensive line that really showed out at the end of the year. And like I'm saying, not by much, yep. but I think it was Fletch. I think it was Mauro Jomo. And I think it was yeah, Ojomo, too. Yeah. Ojomo played well, too. And no yeah. Williams. Yeah. James, what's going on, man? How are you? Let's see. Uh, and Cool Tone says, I have a theory. If mm. the Jets don't extend Reddick after next season, he's coming back. Think about the master plan. Trade Reddick, get $14 million, give Reddick after next year. That would be, yeah, that would be truly crazy. Uh, I, I can't see it happening, though. I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't see it happening. I, I, I think they wanted to get rid of him. I, I, I mean, I do, you know? Mm -hmm. Right, right? I mean, I mean, if they really wanted to keep him, they would have. I think so. I mean, you're not talking like, oh, we had to sign him to this or that. He's under contract. Mr. Rudy put Davis Super Chat. He goes, if we draft Chop Robinson in the first, I'm going to explode. He is not that good. Please, anybody <clears throat> but, but him, Howie. He, uh, unfortunately, Chop is, and I, I, because I, I want to see what Chop Robinson was all about. He, he's coming off a four sack season with barely even 20 tackles. So, but he had a monster combine. I don't want the Eagles to get too analytical when it comes to the first round. We've done it before a million times. That's why we've been going, going down the stretch with some of these, you know, with some of these bad draft picks, you know, before the last right. few years, you know, so. I think I think uh, I think Verse is really good. I like he's got Verse a lot. he's got nine sack seasons the past couple years. Thirteen sacks for Liatu Latu. Um, you know, yeah, but I, I like I like the kid. With Verse got power. Like Verse got Jay and Verse got power. I mean, he's just a he's he's an has has a unlimited motor. That guy doesn't give up on a play. That guy is just a power machine. I mean, it's nuts what he could do. Yeah, no, I like him. I like him, but you have to trade up for him. Yeah, you know? and, and, and the Eagles <clears throat> might do. I mean, maybe they'll do it, but you know, we'll see. They may feel like, well, we got Huff and we got Smith. They're two young guys. We don't need to definitely draft an edge rusher now, even though we lost Reddick. And uh, we'll we'll keep those guys and we'll go offensive linemen. They might. I mean, I'm telling you, they might go offensive line in this draft. You know, people, people. Oh shit! I spilled my water. But people got to accept that. Because they literally, I could, I could literally see them drafting a guy that could play guard and tackle. I, I can, and I can't fault them for doing it either. If it's the right guy, I get it. Fabio, they were super chicos. Was Vic with the Broncos when they had no fly zone? Was he there when? They, I'm not sure. I'm not. Sure. I think I don't think he. Uh, no, I don't think he was. I think that was before him, but I can't remember. Uh, Dan Quan Barkley, <clears throat> thank you for super chat. He goes, "It's about future assets, not just this year." Yeah, I, I guess. I guess. I mean, I guess we're really focusing on twenty twenty six. I. I, I, I <laughs> And Dave is super. I don't mean. I'm not trying to be like a smart ass, but I, I guess. I mean, he otherwise does. I don't. I, otherwise, yeah. I'm 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 not trying to be a smart ass. Like, yeah, I, I guess because I don't know what other sense it makes. But, but why? But why do it at the cost of this year coming up? That's the mystery. Yes. Why do it at the cost of hurting the team that you have now? Yeah. We're not talking about a guy who was like a holdout. Or we don't know that he was going to hold out. We're not talking about a guy that didn't have a contract. You know, he's not like he fr we franchise tagged him or something. It's like, he was on contract. We, he was they, under contract. Yes. His contract was already it was already in the salary cap, but we were already accounted for it, and still had thirty three million dollars. And why? And why isn't you know the Jets? Are, well, yeah, because the, the reports are coming out that the Jets are are going to give him a big you know that they're going to get a contract ready or, you know. But where? Why wasn't this contract already done? Like why you know how long is it going to take for him to get his money? You know what I mean? So we're going to find out what this contract looks like and see like where we're going to say, oh shit, no wonder how he didn't. You know he must have not really budged that much if he's getting paid twenty three, twenty four. You know. Right. Who knows? But I, I think a lot of people, I think if we got something, if we had like a third round pick this year, 
I think people, you know, w- would understand it. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's, 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 it's the whole thing is it's another one of those weird things. Like, I don't know. I don't know the answer. Why what happened with Carson Wentz? We don't know the details of that. You know, we don't know the details um, with some of these things that go on. And now we don't know why Hassan Reddick had to go. Why it was, why was it a must to get rid of him? Tactical Eagle, uh, is this you or me? That's you, I think. Let me see. Yeah, it is. I think it is. It's see. me. I'm yeah. so f- so far behind. And uh... okay, well, uh, welcome to Dig Bat Nation. Welcome, buddy. Thank you for joining. <clears throat> Um, Chris Scott says, remember 31 months ago, Lori said this whole Haas thing would end up in a great way. <laughs> That's yeah, what he said. Right. Yeah, and it made everybody thought that many was going to wind up even, even Nick was like, even Nick was like, oh, he's like, oh, he named like, who was that at the edge, and he put Hassan's name in there like he was already going to be on the roster. But they do that because yeah. he's technically on contract, so he's going to say right. his name. Right. You know? He knew Hoss was going, so there's definitely a couple big pieces coming here. I I think there's something. Uh, I I think personally, there's another shoe to drop. You know, maybe it's a blockbuster trade. Maybe the maybe the Jaguars can't they can't work out oh, something with Josh stop. Allen, and they can't work out a contract, and they they're going to trade him. Didn't they? I'll just give a pay first him? round pick. For, no, no, he's franchise tag. Yeah, he's franchise. But I mean, if they did something like that, I would say, well, no wonder you got to get rid of. Ray. Hopefully, hopefully, Mac, well, huh? Matt Corral gave us some good luck today. He threw his first touchdown in the UFL. So, um, oh, you know, to Deion Kane, it was the it was Matt Corral to Deion Kane today. So hopefully, I, uh, those, I put on my Matt Corral jersey. The those jerseys, <laughs> I got it all tested and ready. Tested. I'm all excited about it. That's our that's our draft uniform. It's our most. Ross have found. Thank you for super chagos. My sources tell me Reddick was hanging with Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that would explain it, you know. Oh you know? man! Tommy says even with Reddick, I still do not think it's the best move to move. Um, I still do not think it's the best move to move up for Ed Rusher. No one is going to replace double digit sack guys. Just draft the corner in the first, and draft the linebacker in the second. And an edge in a second. I listen. My, the, I've said it. The guy I would like to draft is Quinion Mitchell, the cornerback. I, I would like to draft the corner still. Um, you know, but I don't know. I don't know that they're going to. You know. Yeah. Dan the man says he's already getting paid fifteen million, so it'll only be ten extra against the cap. So we have like twenty million. Wait, ten million, fifty. Well, we have thirty-three million, right? Over forty now, we have over forty million now. Right, yeah, and 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 you know, just because you sign him to a contract doesn't mean he's automatically five against the cap. It de- it depends how they structure it, you know. And 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 an extension, like let's say they gave Reddick a two year extension, that extension might not even kick in against the cap until the year after. So there's there's just so many ways to manipulate the cap. The the Eagles it, the Eagles didn't sign Reddick. Because he was a, there was a cap issue. That's the thing. There was no cap issue. There was no money issue. They just didn't want to sign him. For whatever reason, they didn't want to do it. Sewell Blaze, uh, thank you for Super Chat. goes, Reddick literally played in a 3-4 with the Cardinals and the Panthers. Enough of the scheme fit. He wanted to get paid. Mm. He did want to get paid, yeah. Um, but. He was still under contract. He, he, he played he, out his contract within a, after a year. Like it's crazy. Right. But he still had a year on his contract. If the Eagles right. don't trade him, don't do anything, he's going to come in wanting a new contract. Now, if he holds out as a 30 year old guy, I think that's really going to screw you. So I don't even think he would have held out, to be honest with you. But maybe he would have. And if he would have, then yeah, if I'm the Eagles, I get rid of him. I don't want players holding out either. So I mm-hmm. get it. But but we don't know that for certain. Yeah. Worship Guitar Hub, they were super chat. He goes, how he doesn't lose trades. Um, ESPN isn't done. Uh, he isn't done. Yeah, he isn't done. I, I I agree. Because Howie Roseman does not lose trades, and we know this, I think that there's another shooter drop. I think that something else is coming. 
whether it's the draft or whatever. I think they're working on something big. And I think it's going to be a blockbuster. And then I think it's going to be like, all right, that's why we had to do it. You don't think so? I do. I, I think something big's coming. I don't know who, who, who's available. I don't know. Maybe Josh Allen franchise tag is a you working to, tag. All right, all right. Don't come on, man. Wouldn't that be awesome? No, I. I mean, I'm just trying to think. What could it possibly be? But are, are you going to get a guy? I mean, yeah. But I'm saying, if you're a guy, yeah, 17. So what? You how many sacks do you have? 17, like 17 and a half, something like that. So, so you think he's going to be cheaper in a trade? No, but he's younger. I don't care. They, they they'll pay him if he's what? What is he? 25 years old? Mm, yeah. 20, he's younger. Uh, Mouse, thank you for super chat. He goes hindsight is 2020. Uh, Vision, just wait on it. Yeah, we got to. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, dude. I just know that I don't believe this thing. I, I don't believe that the final chapter of this Hassan Reddick trade or why has been written yet. I think it's still to come. 41 to 33. Member for six months. Thank you so much for your support. The whole thing makes me sick. Get done working at the Phil's game and seeing he's uh, gone. How he's got to do something, move up in the draft for someone, could go defensive back, and hopefully coverage helps the pass rush. Yeah, I agree. So how how much are we uh, – how much are we actually um, – how much cap space do we have now? Do you know? I, don't, I know they had, what, 32 and a half 30, million? 33.1, I believe, mm. two days ago Yeah, in cap space. So – I, and Reddick, they they took all his guaranteed fourteen million, right? Yeah, so which is great. They only gonna, yeah, they I only ate up they ate up the million. They ate up yes, yeah, so they're going to eat up the million. The roster bonus, the million dollars, they're going to eat that up, which is nothing. So there's nothing, yeah. you know. So okay, so you have all this cap space now. You you can't. I can't believe that this team is 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 not done yet. I mean, go get Julian Blackman or Justin Simmons. Go get one of those guys. Who who's available that is in like the last year of a contract that might not be resigned? Is there anybody out there that mm -hmm. how he's looking at in a trade? Because I mean, that's what I think. That's what I think's coming. Yeah, Lonnie Taylor, thank you for the super chat. We signed Simmons, drafted defensive end first round, and maybe sign a veteran on the line like Calais Campbell. He would be an interesting pickup. How do you feel after that? Yeah, I would like it. I mean, I would be happy. Um, and and depending upon who they get in, the, you know, in the first round at defensive end, I, I would be happy. But it, I'd still, I'd still be not understand the Reddick trade because you could draft the defensive end anyways. You could sign Justin Simmons anyways. There's, you know, what, what, um, what move could they make that would directly affect Reddick and him playing? And would give reason for the Eagles to move. Say, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, 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 because I think because with the switch, I mean, you're you're looking at if you if you know since Reddick is gone now, like I, I mean, is there a cheaper, more cost effective option? Maybe a guy that's better in pass coverage I, that they're looking at. I, I don't know. I don't know. I but we're gonna yeah. find out. I mean, we're I mean, how he out. said, how he said, even from the the breakfast and and all the press conferences we've got, he said he's gonna be, he's still, you know, he's like, you know, we're always we're gonna keep upgrading this roster. We're not done, you know. So I, I don't think they're done. And I'm not saying spend all your cap space. We need like ten million dollars for the draft, whatever. So I mean, it's no big deal. But they have cap. We never, we're never in this position in these off seasons, especially right. now you freed up. You freed up fourteen point five. Now you're over forty million cap space, and you know, yeah. like you said, like Justin Simmons, you have Isaiah Simmons out there. You have um, uh, who else is out Julian there? Blackman right? Julian Blackman. Julian Blackman. I, I like the idea deal. that still yeah. hasn't got a deal yet. Yeah, it's going to be know? interesting. You know, hopefully Vic Fangio is going to develop one of these guys, man, and and they're going to be mo uh, have a monster year. James says, "Man, sir, so they troll me. Speak the truth." Uh, I tell you, I can tell you about James. James has his own opinions. Great guy, um, but you know you got to respect what he says. I think James is a great guy, and uh, <laughs> let him. He might not agree with you, but he's got his own opinion, and you got to respect it. And uh, I respect him. Um, no one, David Super Chat. He goes, the Haas trade was so dumb. 
If you let him play out his contract and don't resign him, you get a comp pick. I know we could get a second, but no guarantee. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, he has to play what? 67.5% of the snaps on defense. Yeah. So what if they play him 67% of the time? <laughs> Great. You know, uh, I, I, yeah, I don't get it based upon what we, the information we have and what we've seen. I don't, I don't understand it either. Yeah. Uh, and, th and thank you for super chat. Uh, Nikki Cunningham says, sit pad at 22, who isn't supposed to be there will be there. Very well could be, although, you know, the Eagles, the last four out of five years. They got lucky. They have traded up. They've traded up. They've gotten you lucky, know, they too. traded up for Dillard. They stayed put for Reddick. I mean, for Rager. They moved up for Devontae Smith. They moved up for Jordan Davis, and they moved up for Jalen Carter. Um, if, if they traded Hassan Reddick and they want to get an edge rusher, I'm sure they have specific guy they want. And I probably I see them going out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. If Troy Fatanu is there at 22, he's the pick. Jeff Stoutland loves. Oh, Stoutland apparently loves him, and the kid from uh, from Alabama too. Apparently, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Every draft, I I pretty much every time I see a mock, Fatanu goes like around like between 12 and 19. Mm. So I don't know if he's going to be there. Let me catch up to this. We are so far behind. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> Hunter, they were super chat. chat. He goes, Kool Aid or Wiggins in the first, then Bullard and a lineman in the second and third. Also, getting Trotter Jr. would be a dream, too. I, I would love a Jeremiah Trotter Jr. I, I would, you know. Um, what do you. What do you think about the tight end Bowers in the first? I think he's a. I, you, I, that's that's these tight ends now are turning into wide receivers and Bowers just packs a punch. Dude. See, I, this guy. What what is what is I, he, how what is he like two four like what like he's I think he's crazy. like two fifty something. He's big. I I think I think that the more I think about it, the more I like it. Like I almost look at it like the receiver and drafting a receiver early. Like, I like the idea. Can you imagine now you have, uh, you know, another tight end where you can actually go 12-man personnel mm -hmm. when needed? I mean, you really could, like, <laughs> you can really, teams oh. really have no clue what you're doing if you have the right coach. Yeah, like Goddard, Goddard's, you know, 28 years old right now, and you don't have, the, the only we never really found out who our number two is. Now, you know, uh, you, you, you you have, you, you really don't have any, I mean, Albert O is the only one that's really signed. <laughs> what happened? No, the, the, the comment's hilarious. Mr. Rudy put thank you for super chat. He says, call him by his government name. I can't even pronounce it. Demonium Robinson. His production doesn't warrant a nickname like Chop. <laughs> I like that. He doesn't like Mr. Rudy Pooh does not like Chop Robinson. That's what we, we know. Let me see here. Lucius the show. Is this you or me? I think it's me. Thank you for coming, to YouTube member, man. Appreciate it so much for joining up. Thanks, bro, so much. Thanks for the support, man. Thank you, buddy. Uh, let's see here. Uh, no one, they were super chagos. I think how he trades for a cornerback and drafts a defensive back in round one. Mm. What what cornerback are we talking about? Sertain. Sertain. Packers Sertain. I would love Patrick Sertan, but because <laughs> everybody just name? says this shit. Sertan. <laughs> every every everybody, I would yeah. Look, I love him. Great, Big Daddy Long Dong. <laughs> what kind of name? Here we go. It's that time of the show. Uh, uh, Son Reddick looked like his breath stink. F him. <laughs> <laughs> no one. They were super chat. Sorry, I meant defensive end first round. My bad. No, right. you're good. You're good. We 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 got it. Um. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Skid marks. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. Hey fellas, do you think how he pushes the pick? to 2026 is because he has job security and tries to set himself up for the future and other GMs are on a two-year basis. 
I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think that if the Eagles really wanted to fire him, I don't think they would look at it and say, well, he's got a, we got picks in 2026 that he traded for, so we can't keep him. I, I don't think they'll do that. But I don't think, you know, I, I don't think Howie is anywhere close to near getting, um, getting fired. Even if things went south, I don't know that they would fire him. I'd be shocked. Dre Diesel, thank you for Super Chat. He goes, the only way the draft picks becomes a second is if the Jets having injuries to defensive end. Hopefully the Jets stink and it will be an early third. Well, you're assuming because if I guess you're saying that he's not going to get the snaps. I mean, he'll, I think he'll get the double-digit sacks. Let's see what this contract looks like. Let's see what the contract looks like. And he better be playing on uh, top of what he's going to get paid if that's going to be the case. Right, so. right. Yeah. Purified, they were super chat. Because the only thing that makes sense is they love an edge rusher in a draft. This is true. I mean, Howie likes to go defensive line. I don't see them taking an interior defensive lineman in the first round. Not when you've done it the last two years in a row. But an edge rusher, I could definitely see. An offensive lineman, I could definitely see. You know, a cornerback hasn't been drafted since, what, 2002? Um Wide receiver, that would be a stretch. Um, so I mean, I think I think we're down here to to three positions: defensive line, offensive line, and cornerback. And I think cornerback is probably the least percentage of of a chance out of those three. Uh, Big Marshall, thank you for super chagos. I'm praying he trades for Sertan. If we need a corner badly, I'm thinking that this move sets it up. Well, it would set it up. I just, I just don't know that Denver has any intentions of trading Sertan. I've literally heard nothing about Sertan getting traded, so I, I don't know. No one, Denver Super Tank goes. I say I like Asante Samuel Jr. Silver yes. CG. I like, I like him. That's too. a trade. That's a realistic That's trade. He's on one more year on his contract. Is he, is he is he getting shopped though? Are they are no? They not that I heard of, no, but you never know with a phone call. But he's on the last year of his deal, and he's cheap right now. I, I like him. I, I, I do. Perfect. I don't know. Denver Pyle. Uh, Ross have found Denver Super Tango's Eagles will get Simmons, Richard Simmons. <laughs> Great. That's what we need. Now it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting because I'm more convinced now than ever that, that something else is brewing. I just don't know what it is, but the, the Hassan Reddick trade to me, I feel like I feel like this whole thing isn't over yet. I feel like that was the first step was trade Reddick. Now they're trying to do something else, and they've got a plan in place. Because uh, Howie Roseman doesn't lose trades, Joey. He doesn't lose trades. He just doesn't. Five hundred. Did you see Cox and Kelsey both do the first pitch? Yeah, I watched. The Phillies were horrible. Nolan got destroyed. That was a mm. horrible game. It was like seven runs in the first two innings. It was ridiculous. He stunk tonight. Uh, Dallas lost nine players, about to be ten once Gilmore leaves. Yeah, they, they think Bland is like a top five corner, though. I mean, they, they think he's the greatest thing. Since because of because of his, because he's going to be in, in the, you know, he's going to be in the Hall of Fame for breaking records now of right. something yeah. that's just being in the right place at the right time. And that's yeah. it. Right, yeah. right. The right loser at the right time. <laughs> yeah. So, so they think he's like, you know, he had, he led the league in inner pick sixes, whatever. Dude, I could have done those picks as like, those were just those were just freak situations. I think Bland's overrated, and I think that they're gonna pay for it. A big daddy long dong. Thank you for super chat. He goes, EB's not happy with Red Trade on TikTok. Well, what are you gonna do? Thank you for the super chat. Um, yeah, I I guess uh, a lot of people aren't happy about it. Hunter Wright, Dave for super chat. He goes, need a safety too. Reed is not him. Brown is injured. The Justin Simmons thing is... It's very realistic still. That uh, very realistic, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it, it's got to be. Jack Driscoll's gone, right? Yeah. Driscoll signed. Where did he sign? Miami. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, Opetta's signed, Opetta signed with Tampa, and he was he was a nice swing guy with both guards. And, right. uh, yeah, and so Driscoll's gone to to, to Miami. So you only, you only have Steen, and I don't know who else you even have, to be honest. I don't know what other depth they even have at this point. Yeah. Uh, Shadow says, I don't want O-line if they're going to switch positions. Being a backup, don't want another Andre Dillard. I, I prefer not to go off as a line either. I, I think they very well could. Um you know, I think the other thing is, is just because they signed Devin White doesn't mean that our linebacking position is fixed. I mean, they, they still, in my opinion, need to go and get early linebackers in this draft. They need they need linebackers, Joey. They do. They need they need one. They need one linebacker in this draft, at least one. Yeah, they've already hit that position three times or what? Three times already. So, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I don't know, man. I think I think we've got I think we've got another shoe to drop. I think that, that something else is coming. I don't believe that we're done yet uh, at all. I think I mean I I I just think Howie felt like he had to get rid of Reddick. He couldn't get what he wanted, but he had to get get him kind of out of the way for whatever whatever this move is going to be. I, I mean, it, it's the only way I feel better about this whole thing, you know? Yeah, I know. It's hard to – yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's a Philly thing. Says, don't get me wrong, Nolan Smith is a good player, but he's not elite pass rusher like Reddick was. Not not yet. He's not. Not yet. I mean, I think he's got tremendous upside. Um, You know, I, I think he's got tremendous upside, but he's got to go out and play, and he's got to show us. And I think Huff – He's got tremendous upside too, and he's got to show us he can be consistent because because mm -hmm. uh, Reddick had a lot more snaps than than Huff did, and he's gonna you know he is gonna he's gonna get a lot of snaps. So if those two guys go out there, like let's say you go out, if you got let's say Noel Smith went out there and get you eight to nine sacks, and and Huff got you ten to eleven, I think you won't miss Reddick at all. I really think that mm -hmm. that that'll that'll be fine. But that's what it's always going to come down to at the end yeah, of the we, day. We haven't, yeah, we haven't seen the guys hit the field yet. So I know everyone's just looking at the trade and saying it's bad. And, yeah, it, it looks pretty bad right now. But yeah. Uh, yeah. they it's, this isn't this – is, this, is, this trade didn't happen after the draft, you know. And, like, no. you know, now we're, like, at a standstill now no. where we don't know what to do. Um, you know, so give it time. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know if it was the money. <clears throat> like, are they going to make a move for somebody that's going to cost them a lot of money and they wanted the extra space? Or, you know, did they want to remove Reddick from a position because they're going to still upgrade it? I, I don't know. Uh, it, it's going to be interesting. But I, I don't – I in my heart of hearts, I don't feel like we're done yet because um, the Reddick thing, I it just – I don't it, – it doesn't help you at all in 2024. It no. doesn't make you better in 2024. And I know this team's trying to get better. I believe that they're trying to win, you know. Uh, Mr. Rudy Poot, thank you for Super Chat. He goes, I'm not seeing it, fellas. I'm just not seeing improvement on defense. Why is the uh, Op Glazer Slay still on the team? He's a podcaster. Well, here's what I here, here's how I'll, I'll I'll see it. Right, I think you got improved. You improved. You improved in the secondary with two players so far, uh, C.J. Gardner Johnson and Isaiah Rogers. So I think those are improvements and add-ons. I think Devin White was better than any linebacker you mm -hmm. had last year. So I think that's an improvement. An improvement on what? Being a really crappy defense. But it's an improvement. And I thought by getting Bryce Huff, I thought that by adding him as another pass rusher, I thought that, man, with him, Reddick, and Sweat, that is your, like, that is real a real strength for your your defense all of a sudden right. because you're going to have, have these guys fourth quarter you're going to be rotating these guys in and out and they're all going to be fresh man and it's going to be hard for these offensive lines to keep up with these guys um and i thought that was a real strength and i thought that made your defense significantly better but then you took reddick out of the equation i see the defense still being better than it was last year but I don't think the pass rush is at this point. We can say it is. So yeah, I mean that's I, what I, we. I, you know. Yeah, we we thought. Yeah, we with the Bryce Huff sign, we thought like, okay, this is like the, this is the future guy that's going into his prime, and we already know that you know 
Reddick's going to play out his contract and we're going to have him here yeah. for the year. And there you go. You've kind of fixed your fixed him leaving after this year, but yeah. with him leaving now and having Bryce Huff, you know, coming off of a, just a one double digit sack season, not playing a full season, yeah. you know, it, it, you're, you're putting all, you're putting a big gamble on him. You're putting a big gamble on Nolan Smith. I mean, right. I, yeah. I mean, I saw him as like, you know, your, your third down pass rush specialist, like almost like Chris Long was remember. And, like mm-hmm. he would come like that's how I saw Huff playing out next year. And then, you know, after Reddick goes, he would then step up into Reddick's role, you know, or more prominent role, him and Nolan Smith. But man, I, th- that's how I saw it. And I thought that that made your defense a lot better. But losing Reddick, it, it really I think I think you have to wonder how much your defense is like, how much better is your defense today than it was a year ago? And I think it's fair to say not really that much. Right. Because I think that was that big of a, I think that was that big of a move. A Reddick was your best player on defense. He, I mean, he was. Uh, Dre Diesel, thank you for super chat. He goes with Reddick loss. Wide receiver in round one should be out of the question now, right? I would think so. I, I don't think they were going to go wide receiver in round one, anyways. I think round two it's possible, but not round one. <laughs> oh. It's very much pop. Like I still think at receiver, they're not even done yet. Like I don't even know if oh Paris Campbell's really a lock. Devontae Parker at thirty one, he's only a million, well one point two million. I mean, they can get rid of him and it'll be nothing if he can even stay healthy. If he's even a, he's more of an assurance or just a few, maybe just a you know a camp body. That's you know see if he could be more of a a depth piece. I don't, I don't think they're done at receiver at all. I think they're gonna I think they're gonna go draft a guy after round one somewhere. Right. So right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Big day, long dog. Thank you for super chat. Who you got, Cody Rhodes or the Tribal Chief? I I haven't watched wrestling. I couldn't even tell you what's going on with wrestling. I haven't watched wrestling since like two thousand one. You know, like to add to, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Do you know anything? I don't know anything about it, man. I, I couldn't mean, I was, even tell you. You were around during that time. I wasn't, so I don't. Like Cody, I, I know movie. Cody Rhodes is a is a wrestler, but that's about all I know. <laughs> I can't. I love the Attitude Era. I hate. Uh, I tried to watch wrestling. I tried a couple times. Nah. And I'm like, I can't watch this. This is garbage. What the hell did they do? It was. It used to be awesome. ECW. Your mic's off. I think. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. My 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 battery just died on my thing. So. Let me just. I hear you. You're good. Hear me now. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's get through these. Big Marshall, thank you, Super Chagos. We going? Oh, uh, defensive line. We're good. We're going with youth at defensive line. We're good. This Reddick thing frees up money to get a corner. Fangio needs a corner. I like the idea of Samuel too, but I love their tan. We will trade and sign a corner. Watch. Yeah, I mean, we'll, it does free up money, but we also had money, so. I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't think you had to trade Reddick in order to free up money to get somebody else. But I mean, listen, Asante Santa Jr. If he was available, I would love him. Sertan, mm-hmm. I, I of course, but I just, you know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. I hope you're right. I'll put it that way. I hope, I hope you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel can, a lot better. Yeah, so Blaze, thank you for super chat. He goes, I think Latu, Edrin Cooper are our red star players. Now you like Latu, Latu. Um, and yeah. Davis, I I just worry about his health, and the fireman thing bothers me. I'm not gonna lie. It, it just, it you annoys, fucking guys, I swear. It, it annoys the crap out of me that he's a fireman. Not that I have anything against firemen. I just have I have post traumatic uh, Danny Watkins disorder. You know, uh, Danny Watkins. That's what I think of. Arthur Porter. Thank you for super chat. <laughs> he's a good he's wrote. Josh Allen to the Eagles. Now you're talking. Now that would be like don't don't please don't feed him. Don't feed this guy because just don't you feed him, feeding, you get him on a roll. Me. You're getting me going on Josh. I'm gonna be obsessing about Josh Allen over the course of the draft. Oh, I would love it. I would love it. I, I mean, I'm sure that Jaguars are going to are going to not let him go. But if something broke down in negotiations, and Harry Roseman has said, 
dude, we got to step in. And then it was like progressing. And he's like, oh, we can't keep Hassan Reddick. We got to get rid of him because we're bringing Josh on. Now I understand the trade. Now it makes sense. I want Josh Allen, I've decided. <laughs> Fabio Davis, super chat. He goes, what about the trade deadline? Is Howie waiting? No, Howie's not ra- waiting for anything. Uh, no, on Davis, super chat, he goes, I really wish we could get worthy in a second. It would be nice to have a guy when AJ has to go, although we really need uh, Smitty's deal done. I think Smitty's deal will get done, and yeah. we, do need, we do need another receiver yeah, I mean, I mean, Worthy's not a future guy though. Worthy is like a, a a play now type guy. Like Worthy, I don't know. Like you don't want two receivers almost the same size. I'm I'm saying like I think you would want a bigger receiver, maybe in uh you know uh you know like Xavier Leggett, or you wanna you wanna go over you wanna get Mitchell from Texas or something like that. Maybe right. as your wide receiver th- three for this year, the next couple of years, and then put him on the outside with Devontae Smith when AJ Brown leaves. So you know, we'll see. Lad McConkey, yeah. I would absolutely love in the second. You know, I, would I like love him, him. Yeah, I like him so. too. I do. Uh, Josh Allen, Dan Slater. No, we're talking about the other Josh Allen. The other Josh Allen. Uh, the Josh Allen Jacksonville. Uh, Josh Allen, thirty-four million. Hey, I don't care. Like, like I, you're gonna have to pay those guys anyways. I would take them. How old's Josh Allen? Let me see. Josh Allen is twenty-six years old. In his prime. In his prime. 26 years old, I'd pay him. See, I don't think the Eagles have a problem paying. I just think they got to be, you know, can't be 30. He had 17 and a half sacks last year. <sighs> My God. He's listed as a linebacker. So are they So are they tagging him because they're getting him an they, extension? They tagged him, but there hasn't been any progress in, a, in, a nego- in him getting a deal done. So... You know, so, it, right. it, it, there's nothing out there saying they're shopping them. You just have to hope that it, it would go, it would go south. Somebody put that in the comment section, and I was just like, you know, it planted the seed, and there I go. You know how I am. Urban Oasis Art, thank you for super chat, my man. Philly should talk about the kickoff. Well, I'll, I'll say this about the kickoff. Um, it's like the XFL used to do it. I actually. I'm okay with them trying this because I got so sick of watching touchbacks every kick. Um, but you are going to need a guy that can return kicks now. That is not just a throwaway position. Uh, Isaiah Rogers volunteered his services to do that. And um, we'll see if they put Covey there um, or if they try to address this in the draft. But it's important. Yeah, so so Josh Allen's tag, so it's a non-exclusive tag, still negotiating a contract. His tag is twenty-four million dollars for the whole year. Wait, 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 wait. It's not exclusive. It's non-exclusive. That means that he can sign with other team, correct? Right, right. Exclusive, right. Uh, exclusive franchise tag means he can't sign with. He can't go to anybody else. Yeah, they have placed and a non. Non-exclusive means he could sign, but the Jags get time to match it. Yeah, so it's uh it's a non-exclusive tag, um, and they're trying to work. Yeah, so there's negotiations still going on. So if, if nothing is reached, then he will play. That out. would be badass. That would what? be balls to the wall, Joey. <laughs> balls to the wall, Howie. Now that would make me go. Now I know why they got rid of it because that dude. <laughs> God, I'm getting all pumped up. Like I hope. I- Howie's probably sitting there watching, like, like you know, I don't know, the Partridge family at home. And I'm like, he's on the phone talking to Josh Allen. No. But, it, you know, I only bring up that name because it would, like, to me, that's, like, this is what I'm expecting. Like, after the, the way they moved Reddick, I expect something blockbuster like that to make me, like, go, oh, I get it, you know? Yeah. I don't know, man. It's gonna be. It's gonna be Big the more balls, drama. Howie. The ball. The more drama. The more excitement that goes into the draft. It's just because you don't know what's gonna happen. 
No, I, I, I do. I, I now, think there's another shoe to drop. Now the Eagles have money. I mean, now the Eagles have cap. Like this is the first offseason while where they usually Howie will do a lot with less cap. But you know, when you have draft compensation and giving Howie more cap, you know, we kind of went to this free agency like, okay, let's see what he's got because now he has flexibility now. And right. you know, I mean, he signed what he's between resigns and signings in general. I think he he's made about sixteen moves. I mean, he's made a right. lot of moves this offseason. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know what? <laughs> Every morning I wake up on my way to work, I, I send Mark Holmes a picture of our salary cap. <laughs> Just the <a> buzzer ball. <laughs> Five in the morning, I'm sending Mark Holmes a picture. Because it's like we got like all this money and we signed all these players, you know? That's you know, it's crazy. I don't know. I now everybody's talking about Josh Allen. It's gonna be like it's gonna <laughs> be like, like all over the place now. It's gonna be on the news, the rumors. Um, no, there, there there's no there's no rumor out there. There's no information that that's what he's doing. It's just I expect a counter move to the Reddick being something like blockbuster like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that's okay. all I'm saying. But could you imagine? Like, I would trade my first round pick right now for him. Right now. <laughs> not in um, Can you stop? My God. And he's listed not as a defensive end. He's listed as a linebacker. Yeah, well, what do you so so? What is the draft cut? What would be the draft compensation for a guy coming off seventeen sacks is only twenty six. I think I think an exclusive. I think an exclusive. Uh, if you sign a guy non exclusive franchise, I think it's two first round picks minimum. <laughs> but usually teams negotiate that. So I would do like uh, I would do a first round pick, like a first this year and then like a third next year or something like that. Mm. Hell, I would do a first and a second this year. I would do a first and a second for Josh Allen right now. Let's see. Let's see. Now, now you're talking. Now it's like have big balls, Howie. Balls to the wall, baby. That Reddick trade only screwed us up mentally for a day. And then <laughs> Howie went and brought Josh out. Now you're talking. Oh, uh, Big Daddy Long Dong, thank you for Super Chat. Draft Trey Branson and one two punch with him and Bark. I, I like the idea of of getting um getting a, a you know another running back. Um whether it's the draft or or a free agency, you, I think you need another running back. Oh yeah, they yeah, have one more body in the draft, probably. Yeah. So do you think they would give Reddick his million dollar bonus in no. April first? No. I mean, I think if he was still on the roster, they would have. But I, I, I you they're, know, they're eating it up. It's they're hard for eat me. It it's hard for me to believe that they were really worried about that, either. You know, so I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Don Killionaire says, "I got him convinced. Bring me Allen. We're gonna dra <laughs> trade Allen. What's number is he? You, you <laughs> You might be. You know, you're right about a lot of things, dude. But I, I just. I'm not making a predict. No, this isn't a prediction. Uh, I am not predicting they're getting Josh Allen. No, I'm not doing that. I'm just saying that a move equivalent to that kind of move is what I expect to happen because of the trade. With and you're good, and you would be good giving sense. away. You'd be good giving away a first and a second because you're figuring you already have an extra second, so you'd feel yeah. Feel good because yeah. you already know you're getting you're getting a guy a 26 year old 17 and a half six 17 and a half sacks 26 year old yeah but they I mean they're not going to do it I don't I don't think this I'm not I'm not saying this is really ha like I think it's going to happen I'm not predicting it's going to happen I'm not saying that it's not like when I said the Eagles need to trade for AJ Brown no I'm just saying me personally I would love it but I expect the Eagles to do something that is going to make us understand. The Reddick trade, something like tr trading for a franchise tag player like that, that would make me understand it. That's all I'm saying. You know, but we'll see. We will see. Uh, it's going to be everybody's going to be talking about Josh Allen now. Watch. <laughs> I was just saying, I like somebody who suggested it. I was like, yeah, that's the kind of move we need. Mm. You know, that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying it's going to be him or something. I'm just saying that no. because the Reddick trade was so, you know, out there, I believe that there's got to be something that's coming back to us that's going to be bigger 
and we're going to understand. That's all I'm trying to say. How the Eagles could trade for Josh Allen, video number 20. <laughs> Dude, I already got three ready to go. I don't doubt it. No, I don't. I uh, Not yet. But I'll tell you what. If I see something in the paper or written, Jaguars and Allen at a standstill. Oh, <laughs> Oh boy, I'm coming for that ass. I'm coming. Pause. But yeah, if I see a Jags and Allen far off on deal, oh, yeah, Eagles. No, you know it's coming. We'll see. How how he has a plan? There's a plan. I just don't know what it is yet. So that that's why I'm gonna wait and see. You know, it'll be interesting. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Is there anything else we have before we get out of here? We better get out of here before um, <laughs> the Eagles start calling us. Who knows? They sometimes they do listen. We do sometimes we we. They, oh, yeah, we I know they know. do. Do I like Jackson? I do like Jackson Power uh, Johnson. I do. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I think that that would be a, a really out of the box signing if the Eagles were to like draft him. But he's a big center and he could play guard, so I, I do like him. Yeah. 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 Be a good pick. I, I, I'm not against them. I'm not against them going offensive no. line. Like if they, get, I, I'm not either. I'm yeah. totally okay. I'm okay with the offensive line as long as it's the best player that was on their board. Yeah, trade you know for Josh I mean? Allen. Don't take. Yeah, don't. Oh yeah, <laughs> Josh Allen. Dude's a beast, man. I know. Seven. You know. All I'm, right. I'm gonna here. Here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna open my phone in the morning. I'm gonna see Josh out. I don't know what the, Philly was doing this shit last year. I forgot what he was. Sa- I forgot what you were saying, Matt Corral. I forgot what you were. I wasn't saying doing Matt Corral. That was easy <laughs> what, money. Whatever. No, 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 no. Who you sent me a picture of somebody every single second of the day? I forgot who it was. It was Bajon Robinson. Oh yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> But that's when Carter was supposed to be going in the top five. Yeah, right, right. I mean, we were, we, we always said, we always said, if if Will Anderson and Carter are gone, take Bajan. And I I telling you right now, they would have. I believe it, especially after the Barkley signing. I know for a fact they would. Mm-hmm. You know, but I, I I just expect, I expect that Howie Roseman didn't make that plan to trade Hassan Reddick without having the next step to it another you know i'm going to trade reddick because i'm going to do this that's all i'm saying that's all i'm saying so i'm waiting to see what this next step is because i yeah. don't believe he just traded reddick <clears throat> trade i believe that there's i believe he's got a plan in place right right you know you know but right now i'm going to go get my hat made it's going to say uh trade for what number is is, is josh allen <clears throat> For uh, what number is it? 41? Is it 41? Yeah, yeah 41. 41. 41. Yeah, trade for 41. <laughs> it's coming, baby. It's coming. Pause. All right. Well, I do check that 17.5 sacks, 66 total tackles, 33 quarterback hits, 17 tackles for loss, Monster. two forced fumbles, pass breakup, and a Monster. pick. Monster Joey. He's the monster, man. You know, uh, Jamal, thank you for super chat. He goes, it will, it will all be good soon. Yeah, it will. It will. It will. It's going to be interesting, man. Uh, Big Daddy Long Dog says, you all see Mark Holmes twerking the other day. <laughs> no, I did not. I hear him crying uh, every day, but I did not. But uh, thank you for the super chat, man. But I think that's pretty much it, right? We've gone almost two hours. Dang. Yeah, well, we have a lot we to have talk a lot. about. No? Yeah, it's 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 when you lose a player like this. Through. Yeah, that's what happened. We were yeah. we were thinking like maybe something was gonna break. I mean, thank God that this this didn't break on Easter, but you know. Yeah, I remember the McNabb trade broke. I believe Easter when they traded oh. in Washington. Yeah. So you know, we'll see, man. I got to go. I got to go send my Jacksonville Jaguar people out there and figure out what's going on <laughs> no, i'm just kidding just kidding people i because i know i'm gonna get dm'd you know or mark holmes will do a video it's really 500 things the eagles are getting he said they're getting josh i did not 
But, yeah, we we did. They they say you know the Eagle fans think they can get everybody. I'm like, yeah, we actually can. <laughs> we yeah, actually we feel like we do. can <laughs> because we have a legit. Yeah, because we, I mean, how many guys have we <laughs> talked about getting and then got? It, it, you know what I mean? It's like ridiculous. It's how many times? Year. How many times we got shit for saying certain specific names? Oh, and then man, they get dude, them. When, when I I did a video on AJ Brown trade, the Eagles need trade. Yeah. Manager. Holy shit! Yeah, I got it's bad. Called. It's bad. It was. You know, because I I was doing videos saying, all right, there are three receivers, Debo, Metcalf, and Brown. All of them want to trade. The Eagles need to trade for one of these guys. You've got two first-round picks. <clears throat> and then they did it. When A.J. Brown was working out with a Jalen Hurts in the offseason, like, I was like, oh, shit, they're working out together. That would be really cool if, how you know, how we can make a trade, you know. But then I got, you know, so much, I mean, just so much shit. Right. You yeah. know, like I didn't even say they're going to get him. I just say hey, they're working out. Like that'd be cool if he, you know, he, they made a yeah. trade for him, but probably wouldn't yeah. happen. But well, you know. can't talk about any. If you talk about anything, people will say, "Well, why are you talking about it?" I'm like, I'm talking about it because there's an article on it, and I'm commenting and giving my opinion on it. That's it. I'm not saying if if I think the Eagles should get somebody, I'll literally say I think they should get this guy. You know, yes sir, I, yes sir. I said, I think Saquon Barkley, boom. C.J. Garner Johnson, boom. So you know, yeah. If, if if they trade for Josh Allen, Philly's gonna rip off the Matt Corral jersey. He's gonna have a fucking Josh Allen Eagles jersey already, custom made. Dude, if they if they if they sign <clears throat> Josh Allen, I might have to like, I don't know what I'll do, man. I. I you, you're going to be running around in your underwear if we get a corner. I, uh, maybe I'll have no to a like linebacker, a, a linebacker. Oh, linebacker. Maybe I'll have to do like uh, shave my head on. I don't know what the hell. I'm doing. But but it, it, I'll go nuts. But I don't think it happened. I mean, there's no rumors out there. Just for anybody just joining, there's no rumors. There's no nothing. It's just pure speculation. I'm just saying that I want a counter move, something that big to you know offset the Hassan Reddick stuff. Oh, don't Basically. say you're talk about you're gonna talk about on Dan Cilio's show, and then that's when it's gonna <laughs> every e, that's when every Eagle fan is gonna post that shit. Say, oh my god, like you know, ja, you know, uh -oh. Josh Allen, it's gonna happen. <laughs> you say it on Dan. I know it's gonna happen. I'm waiting for you to jump on there. It's gonna happen. You're gonna say it on that show, and then it's gonna it's gonna explode all over the place because you know oh, you're, you're the you're the prime chief. Of where I, I know. I, I I get things. I get things going, man. I get it pumped up. I get everybody fired up. That's what I do, man. That's what I do. I have to put these ideas out there. You know, I'm not saying they're going to do it. All I'm saying is that I believe another shoe is going to drop on the red. Yeah, I train. believe it. I believe and, it. And and it's going to be something big. And somebody posted a comment and said, "Well, what about something mm -hmm. like this?" And it planted the seed, and I sat in bed for two and a half hours thinking about Josh Allen coming to the Eagles. <gasps> and now it's now it's like I can't stop thinking about it. Yeah, exactly. And my wife's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Josh Allen." She's like, "Who the hell's that?" Who I'm like, fuck, "Who the fuck is that?" I'm like, he's a football player. She's like, "You're really thinking about men laying in bed next to me?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Oh God," but you know, it is what it is. So we'll see. All right. I mean, is there anything else to say before we get out of here? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm done. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, everybody enjoy your holiday tomorrow. Yes. And, happy um, Easter to everybody. Yeah. Um. Have a great day. Are you doing? Are you doing any videos tomorrow? Or anything? Yeah, I, I have a video set up for tomorrow already. Um, I'm not doing anything tomorrow. Like to me, you know, I'm not doing anything tomorrow. I'm gonna have a big day tomorrow, so probably yeah. not. I, I, I might or might not have a video out tomorrow. I, I haven't filmed anything yet, but. I might do something. So you might see me tomorrow. You might not, you know, but we'll just see. But um, with that said, uh, I think we should get on out of here now. We've been here for two hours. And if you guys haven't, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, click the link in my description, go sub up Joey Shakes as well. And we will see you guys. Oh, we got we got one on the way out. Uh, Bald Eagle, thank you for the super chat. He goes, I knew Hassan was going to. Going after the rumors, sweat was coming to the surface. Mm -hmm. Howie will make a move because he sees a market for defensive ends cheap. I, I think you're I think you're right. I think there will be another move. And I'm not so surprised that they traded Reddick. It's just that they got a 2026 draft pick. We've never seen that. 
Before. Yeah, we had a we had a feeling when when we saw Josh Sweat got restructured, we were like, oh, okay. Well, after the Instagram thing that Josh Sweat put and said, I will miss you all on his Instagram. I mean, right. I wonder if that was even towards the Eagles at all, because it was just crazy timing when he put that up on his Instagram. And then I don't know, just kind of weird. So yeah. But we yeah, thought all exactly. of them could be together for this year to compete for a Super Bowl and do their thing. So yeah, we thought so, but hey, it, it is what it is. We, we will see what happens. Happy Easter to everybody. With that said, we out of here. Peace. Peace. Two minutes to go. You have plenty of time. Come on. Oh, oh shit, Dad! No, Dad! it's oh, over. Shit. It's over. This game is over. Cut it off. It's over. Fuck. That's Congratulations, Green Bay. Congratulations, Green Bay. Congratulations, Green Bay. I said run the ball. Congratulations, man. Green Bay. Dak Prescott, you need to be fired today. Mm. That was on you, Dak. That was on you, Dak. That was on you, Dak. I said run the ball. That was man. on Dak Prescott. Trying to feed the Trying to feed You tried to feed the C Lamb. You got to get with the C Lamb! God! It's over! It's over, Dad! Put Trey Lance in the game. Trey Lance can't do worse than you. I'm, a, I'm an idiot because I buy into this shit. I buy into this shit. Because here's the thing I am a grown ass man. And I talk the talk. <sighs> it is killing me. And I, I feel it coming. I feel like it's going to take Jerry Jones taking Cut it off. It's over.